Good morning. I had an exhausting week in San Antonio. Our new bishop um, got some solid feedback from the clergy that he didn't give us any breaks at all. So hopefully next time around we'll get a little bit of free time to take a nap. Um, but it was a good week and I'll tell you more uh, about some of the things that our bishop is um, hoping to do during my announcements. And I'll be talking to the parish council tomorrow evening uh, about some of the other things that, um, that he wants to put in place. But it's good to be home. <clears throat> in a few minutes, you're going to hear me sing the words, we offer you your own for what is your own in all and for the sake of all. And while I'm doing that, Father Andrew is going to be making the sign of the cross with the bread and the wine that have come through the assembly that will become the body and blood of Christ, but also represent all the things, all the gifts that we give to God in gratitude. And so we respond in gratitude, right? We praise you, we bless you, we thank you, we worship you. And I think that we can see the gospel today this terrifying gospel, in the context of gratitude. As I said last week, I've been thinking about the season of Great Lent as a season that is a tithe of gratitude, right? giving back 10%, in this case, of the year, 40 days, in gratitude for all that God has given us. Because I think you can see the difference between the sheep and the goats as one of gratitude or ingratitude. What we have is not ours. We don't take it with us. We, you know, we get a paper that says it's ours, but it really isn't ours. You know, ultimately it's God's. And so when we give back to God in gratitude, we are recognizing that God has given us everything that we have and everything that we are. And most especially, we share with those who are in need, in the gospel, Jesus says, with the least of our brothers and sisters, because when we do so, we are giving back directly to Christ. Jesus says in the gospel today, when you give to those who are in need, you give to me. And so, as I've said, the last few weeks have kind of prepared us for the season of Great Lent. Today is Meat Fair Sunday. Um, happy coincidence is also Super Bowl Sunday. I'm sure there'd be a terrible conflict if it was Cheese Fair Sunday. Um, people would have to figure out what to do. But this is the last time, if you're keeping the traditional fast, that you can eat meat until Pascha. A couple of weeks ago, we had a gospel on prayer. Last week on fasting. This week on almsgiving. And so on this Meat Fair Sunday, we now have to really start to think. Next Sunday is cheese fair. The last time we can have cheese or dairy if we're keeping the full fast. And then after the liturgy, next Sunday we'll have some cheese and bread and so forth outside. And for those who wish to stay, we'll come back in for forgiveness vespers. Beginning the season of Great Lent by forgiving each other and asking God for forgiveness. And so, we need to now make solid plans. How are we going to pray in these days of the fast? How, what are we going to read? We're we going to read a little bit more of the Bible, of a spiritual book. What services in the church are we going to attend? Are we going to spend a little more time in our icon corner praying the Jesus prayer? How are we going to fast in these days? If we can't do the whole fast or we don't want to, which is a different discussion, I suppose, um, we can at least do some of it, right? Not inventing our own stuff, but doing some of what the fast calls for. And today we're challenged to think about how we will share God's mercy in gratitude, because that's what the word almsgiving means. It means giving mercy, mercy that's been given to us. And so the sheep and the goats both were surprised, right? Because Jesus said, when I was hungry or thirsty. Well, certainly 
during the season of Lent as through the rest of the year, we have opportunities to physically feed people who are hungry and thirsty. We have a bin in the back of the church, in the narthex, for the Backpack Buddies program, where we actually give food and drink to children in Alabama, here in our own, in our own uh, backyard. But we also can be mindful of those who are hungry and thirsty for attention or for kindness. We can clothe the naked of very good Lenten practices to clean out your closets during Lent. And you know, all those things that you really are never gonna wear again, let's be honest, um, you know, to give them away so that someone else might be able to wear them. But there are people who are also naked or estranged because of shame or because of a quarrel, and we can forgive in these days of Great Lent. It's a beautiful thing that we begin the season of Lent with forgiveness, so that on Clean Monday we might be spiritually and physically clean. To visit those who are physically sick, but also those who are sick with fear and anxiety to comfort them. If we can give alms in any way to one person during the season of Great Lent, we can come to Pascha with joy. And so, next Sunday we have Cheese Fair, Forgiveness Vespers, and then Monday is Clean Monday. How are you going to spend these days of the fast? How are you going to spend this beautiful season, this tithe of gratitude?